This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Sky Island Being the Further Exciting Adventures of Trot and Captain Bill After Their Visit to the Sea Fairies By L. Frank Baum A Little Talk to My Readers with the Sea Fairies, my book for 1911, I ventured into a new field of fairy literature, and to my delight the book was received with much approval by my former readers, many of whom have written me that they like Trot almost as well as Dorothy. As Dorothy was an old, old friend, and Trot a new one, I think this is very high praise for Cap'n Bill's little companion. Cap'n Bill is also a new character, who seems to have won approval, and so both Trot and the old sailor are again introduced in the present story, which may be called the second of the series of adventures of Trot and Cap'n Bill. But you will recognize some other acquaintances in Sky Island. Here, for instance, is Button Bright, who once had an adventure with Dorothy in Oz, and without Button Bright and his magic umbrella, you will see that the story of Sky Island could never have been written. As Polychrome, the rainbow's daughter, lives in the sky, it is natural that Trot and Button Bright meet her during their adventures there. The story of Sky Island has astonished me considerably, and I think it will also astonish you. The sky country is certainly a remarkable fairyland, but after reading about it I am sure you will agree with me that our old Mother Earth is a very good place to live upon, and that Trot and Button Bright and Captain Bill were fortunate to get back to it again. By the way, one of my little correspondents has suggested that I print my address in this book, so that the children may know where letters will reach me. I am doing this, as you see, and hope that many will write to me and tell me how they like Sky Island. My greatest treasures are these letters from my readers, and I am always delighted to receive them. L. Frank Baum Oscott at Hollywood in California. Chapter 1. A Mysterious Arrival Hello, said the boy. Hello, answered Trot, looking up surprised. Where did you come from? Philadelphia, said he. Dear me, said Trot, you're a long way from home then. About as far as I can get in this country, the boy replied, gazing out over the water. Isn't this the Pacific Ocean? "'Of course.' "'Why, of course?' he asked. "'Because it's the biggest lot of water in all the world. "'How do you know?' "'Cap'n Bill told me,' she said. "'Who's Cap'n Bill?' "'An old sailor man who's a friend of mine. "'He lives at my house, too. "'The white house you see over there on the bluff. "'Oh, is that your home?' "'Yes,' said Trot proudly. "'Isn't it pretty?' "'It's pretty small, seems to me,' answered the boy. "'But it's big enough for Mother and me and for Cap'n Bill,' said Trot. "'Haven't you any father?' "'Yes, indeed. Cap'n Griffin is my father. "'But he's gone most of the time, sailing on his ship. "'You must be a stranger in these parts, little boy. "'Not to know about Cap'n Griffin,' she added, "'looking at her new acquaintance intently. "'Trot wasn't very big herself, "'but the boy was not quite as big as Trot.' He was thin, with a rather pale complexion, and his blue eyes were round and earnest. He wore a blouse waist, a short jacket, and knickerbockers. Under his arm he held an old umbrella that was as tall as he was. Its covering had once been of thick brown cloth, but the color had faded to a dull drab, except in the creases, and Trot thought it looked very old-fashioned and common. The handle, though, was really curious. It was of wood and carved to resemble an elephant's head. The long trunk of the elephant was curved to make a crook for the handle. The eyes of the beast were small red stones, and it had two tiny tusks of ivory. The boy's dress was rich and expensive, even to his fine silk stockings and tan shoes, but the umbrella looked old and disreputable. "'It isn't the rainy season now,' remarked Trot, with a smile. "'The boy glanced at his umbrella and hugged it tighter. "'No,' he said. 
but umbrellas are good for other things sides rain. Afraid of getting sunstruck? asked Trot. He shook his head, still gazing far out over the water. I don't believe this is bigger than any other ocean, said he. I can't see any more of it than I can of the Atlantic. You'd find out if you had to sail across it, she declared. When I was in Chicago, I saw Lake Michigan, he went on dreamily, and it looked just as big as this water does. Looks don't count with oceans, she asserted. Your eyes can only see just so far, whether you're looking at a pond or a great sea. Then it doesn't make any difference how big an ocean is, he replied. What are those buildings over there? Pointing to the right along the shore of the bay. That's the town, said Trot. Most of the people earn their living by fishing. The town is half a mile from here, and my house is almost half a mile the other way, so it's about a mile from my house to the town. The boy sat down beside her on the flat rock. Do you like girls? asked Trot, making room for him. Not very well, the boy replied. Some of them are pretty good fellows, but not many. The girls with brothers are bossy, and the girls without brothers haven't any go to em. But the world's full of both kinds, and so I try to take em as they come. They can't help being girls, of course. Do you like boys? When they don't put on airs or get roughhouse, replied Trot, my experience with boys is that they don't know much, but think they do. That's true, he answered. I don't like boys much better than I do girls, but some are all right, and you seem to be one of em. Much obliged, laughed Trot. You aren't so bad either, and if we don't both turn out worse than we seem, we ought to be friends. He nodded rather absently and tossed a pebble into the water. Been to town? he asked. Yes, mother wanted some yarn from the store. She's knittin' Cap'n Bill a stocking. Doesn't he wear but one? That's all. Cap'n Bill has one wooden leg, she explained. That's why he don't sail her any more. I'm glad of it, cause Cap'n Bill knows everything. I suppose he knows more than anyone else in all the world. Phew! said the boy. That's taking a good deal for granted. A one legged sailor can't know much. Why not? asked Trot, a little indignantly. Folks don't learn things with their legs, do they? No, but they can't get around without legs to find out things. Cap'n Bill got round lively enough once, when he had two meat legs, she said. He sailed to most every country on the earth, and found out all that the people in em knew, and a lot besides. He was shipwrecked on a desert island once, and another time a cannibal king tried to boil him for dinner. And one day a shark chased him seven leagues through the water, and what's a league? asked the boy. It's a uh, a distance like a mile is, but a league isn't a mile, you know. What is it then? You'll have to ask Cap'n Bill. He knows everything. Not everything objected the boy. I know some things Cap'n Bill don't know. If you do, you're pretty smart, said Trot. No, I'm not smart. Some folks think I'm stupid. I guess I am. But I know a few things that are wonderful. Cap'n Bill may know more'n I do, a good deal more, but I'm sure he can't know the same things. Say, what's your name? I'm Mayor Griffith, but everybody calls me Trot. It's a nickname I got when I was a baby, cause I trotted so fast when I walked, and it seems to stick. What's your name? Button Bright. How did it happen? How did what happen? Such a funny name. The boy scowled a little. Just like your own nickname happened, he answered gloomily. My father once said I was bright as a button, and it made everybody laugh. So they always call me Button Bright. What's your real name? she inquired. Saladin Paracelsus de Lambertine Evagni von Smith. Guess I'll call you Button Bright, said Trot, sighing. The only other thing would be salad. And I don't like salads. Do you find it hard work to member all of your name? I don't try to, he said. There's a lot more of it, but I've forgotten the rest. Thank you, said Trot. Oh, here comes Cap'n Bill, as she glanced over her shoulder. Button Bright turned also and looked solemnly at the old sailor who came stumping along the path toward them. Cap'n Bill wasn't a very handsome man. He was old, 
not very tall, somewhat stout and chubby with a round face, a bald head, and a scraggly fringe of reddish whisker underneath his chin. But his blue eyes were frank and merry, and his smile like a ray of sunshine. He wore a sailor suit with a broad collar, a short pea jacket, and wide bottomed sailor trousers, one leg of which covered his wooden limb but did not hide it. As he came pegging along the path, as he himself described his hobbling walk, his hands were pushed into his coat pockets, a pipe was in his mouth, and his black neck scarf was fluttering behind him in the breeze like a sable banner. Button Bright liked the sailor's looks. There was something very winning, something jolly and carefree and honest and sociable about the ancient seaman that made him everybody's friend, so the strange boy was glad to meet him. "'Well, well, Trot,' he said, coming up. "'Is this the way you hurry to town?' "'No, for I'm on my way back,' said she. "'I did hurry when I was going, Cap'n Bill, but on my way home I sat down here to rest and watch the gulls. The gulls seem awful busy today, Cap'n Bill.' And then I found this boy. Cap'n Bill looked at the boy curiously. Don't think as ever I saw him in the village, he remarked. Guess as you're a stranger, my lad. Button Bright nodded. Hain't walked the nine mile from the railroad station, have ye? asked Cap'n Bill. No, said Button Bright. The sailor glanced around him. Don't see no wagon, er no automobile, he added. No, said Button Bright. Catch a ride with someone? Button Bright shook his head. A boat can't land here. The rocks is too thick and too sharp, continued Cap'n Bill, peering down toward the foot of the bluff on which they sat, and against which the waves broke in foam. No, said Button Bright. I didn't come by water. Trot laughed. He must have dropped from the sky, Cap'n Bill, she exclaimed. Button Bright nodded very seriously. That's it, he said. "'Oh, a airship, eh?' cried Cap'n Bill in surprise. "'I've heard tell of them sky carriages, something like flying automobiles, ain't they?' "'I don't know,' said Button Bright. "'I've never seen one.' Both Trot and Cap'n Bill now looked at the boy in astonishment. "'Now then, let me think a minute,' said the sailor reflectively. "'Here's a riddle for us to guess, Trot. "'He dropped from the sky,' he says, "'and yet he didn't come in an airship.' Riddle come, riddle come, re. What can the answer be? Trot looked the boy over carefully. She didn't see any wings on him. The only queer thing about him was his big umbrella. Oh, she said suddenly, clapping her hands together. I know now. Do you? asked Cap'n Bill doubtfully. Then you're some smarter near I am, mate. He sailed down with the umbrella, she cried. He used his umbrella as a para para shoot said Cap'n Bill. They're called parachutes, mate. But why, I can't say. Did you drop down in that way, my lad? he asked the boy. Yes, said Button Bright. That was the way. But how did you get up there? asked Trot. You had to get up in the air before you could drop down. And, oh, Cap'n Bill, he says he's from Philadelphia, which is a big city way at the other end of America. Are you? asked the sailor, surprised. Button Bright nodded again. I ought to tell you my story, he said, and then you'd understand, but I'm afraid you won't believe me, and... He suddenly broke off and looked toward the white house in the distance. Didn't you say you lived over there, he inquired? Yes, said Trot. Won't you come home with us? I'd like to, replied Button Bright. All right, let's go then, said the girl, jumping up. The three walked silently along the path. The old sailor man had refilled his pipe and lighted it again, and he smoked thoughtfully as he pegged along beside the children. "'Know anyone around here?' he asked Button Bright. "'No one but you two, said the boy, following after Trot with his umbrella tucked carefully underneath his arm. "'And you don't know us very well,' remarked Cap'n Bill. "'Seems to me you're pretty young to be traveling so far from home and among strangers, but I won't say anything more.' till we've heard your story. Then, if you need my advice, or Trot's advice, she's a wise little girl for her size, Trot is, we'll freely give it, and be glad to help you. Thank you, replied Button Bright. I need a lot of things, I'm sure, and perhaps advice is one of them. 
End of chapter 1